Thank you for joining us for our one on one style webinar series for the Molyco lubricants. In today's session, we will highlight the compound product family, diving into what a compound is composed of, where and when to use one, and how to select the right compound solution. Today's session will be led by William Fick, a lubricants application engineer from DuPont and the Molyco Performance Lubricants. Will, please take it away. Compounds, versatile problem solvers. So first, I'd like to touch on Molyco as a whole. Molyco is a specialty lubricants company. We have six different product groups, greases, pastes, oils, compounds, dispersions, and anti-friction coatings. Today, we're going to be speaking specifically about the compounds. So what are compounds? Well, by definition, compound is something formed by union of elements or parts. Creating compounds involves a lot of chemistry, and I mean a lot. There's chemistry and the intermediates. And then in reactions within those intermediates, there's additional intermediates, things that you don't even see at the final product level. But they're all things that are necessary in order to get the proper performance out of the compound that you're targeting. So what is a silicone compound? Silicone compounds are going to be what the Molly Coat specialize in. It's made up of a fluid, a filler, and then sometimes there's additional additives as well. On the fluid side of things, with it being a silicone compound, you're going to expect some type of silicone fluid. The fluid is really there to deliver the moisture resistance, the dielectric strength, thermal stability, and the re release agent type characteristics in that compound. Now, you can use different types of fluids than the silicone family to really get different properties out of it. So you can get superior dielectric strength or increased temperature windows and resistances, thermal stability, and things of that nature. There's obviously some trade-offs, sometimes things such as cost or used strengths in other areas. So that's all part of the formulation. Then there's the filler, which is typically a silica, doesn't always have to be. This is really the part of the compound that provides you with that consistency or that thickness. It's really, it, its big job is really to kind of hold that fluid in place. You can use a silica or less filler, and you might see an increase in bleed out from your actual th thickener of that silicone fluid. Or sometimes you end up with a stiffer compound if you use too much. So it's all a balancing act for what you're trying to do. There's also the additives, usually a very small amount, things to kind of help in certain areas, things that can help with stabilizing your viscosity or changing the overall feel and structure of your compound as well. So why use a compound? We'll get into some application specifics on the next slide. But in general, you're getting from a compound is a, a means to deliver that silicone fluid to a place that otherwise couldn't receive it without without that thickener holding it in place. So in areas that you can't simply apply a silicone fluid, you can now keep that silicone fluid in place at the at the application site. So you're getting that uh, thickness and that stability, which can help add performance in some situations. You're getting thermal stability, oxidative stability, dielectric properties if you need to use it in an electrical application. Great for waterproof and sealing. It's also compatible with many different elastomers, which makes it a useful tool in a lot of different applications. Let's dive into the applications a little bit. These are the typical applications. It doesn't encompass all that they could be used for, but it's great at acting as a moisture barrier. Silicone is great at repelling water. So moisture barrier, gap fill. Again, it has great dielectric strength, so using it as a dielectric insulator to keep things from arcing, stuff of that nature. That's why it's also great for lubricating high current switches. Another thing that it's typically used for is as a release agent for plastic and metal surfaces. So it can be used for old treatments to make sure that parts aren't sticking to old string plastic injection, things of that sort. One of the most common common applications that you'll see it used for are O-rings and valve sealants. The beauty is that it can be used at both normal and high temperatures, as well as really low temperatures. Is vacuum and pressure systems, sealing. So as you can see, sealing and is a huge part of compounds. Well pulling, it's great for lubricating cables as they're being pulled through an orifice or something. Not as typical, but noise reduction is another one that you might see it used. And as an added benefit, a lot of these compounds have a great selection for FDA and NSF statuses, such as SF51 and 61. 
So things like drinkable water applications. It's worth highlighting though that they're not typically used for a metal to metal lubrication. There are certain in instances where you might, typically that's something that you might go to a grease for. And it's also not great for silicone rubbers. So silicone O-rings, we would not recommend using a silicone compound. It can all the rubber and cause degradation, which can lead to leaks. While we're on the topic of swell, let's talk a little bit about elastomer swell. A good reference that's used throughout the industry really is this uh, that you see below. So a rating one would be considered excellent. That would be anything under 10% swell. Then you have a two, which is good, anything between 10 and 20. A three would be doubtful, 20 to 40%, and four would be not used situation or greater than 40%. There are many different elastomer grades and brands, and all of these can differ. So it's hard to give yes or no. We always recommend that customers do a little bit of testing of their own with specific compounds and elastomers to make sure it's going to work for their application. You also might not think for your application that 10 to 20% is good, so you might be searching for something that's excellent. Just general descriptions based on industry standard. Here's a, a fun little test that I conducted as a, a visual so that you can kind of see how elastomer swell takes place. These are two EPDM O-rings, both soaked for seven days at room temperature. One on the left is Molly Coat 111 compound soaked, and the one on the right is just a typical petroleum jelly substance. So the O-ring on the left, when it came out after the seven days, had little to no swell, no degradation, notable durometer change. And because of these three things, you can expect a long-term sealing capability as well as a very low chance of leaks. The petroleum Jelly, on the other hand, we could see noticeable swelling, see the difference, even though it's small, it's it's enough. Water's a, got very small molecules and it can make its way through the, <laughs> the smallest of gaps. There was also degradation and softening of the rubber. You could feel a, a big difference in the way that the material felt. Because of this, you would expect a decreased ability to seal, especially over time, and an increased chance for leaks. So now that we have a general understanding of how compounds are made and what applications that they're used on, let's get into some of the Molly Coat uh, offerings and uh, applications that we would target those towards. So for sealing, a, a great typical starting compound is our Molly Coat 111 compound. So general, it's a general O-ring valve lubricant. It's a thickened consistency. It's an NLGI grade three to four. It's translucent white and a great starting Point for anybody. The other common compounds that we have for sealing are Molly Coat High Vacuum Grease. This is a stiff, non-melting silicone co compound. As it says in the name, it's great for uh, sealing vacuum and pressure systems. The Molly Coat 112 compound is very similar to the 111, but completely different in its chemistry. It's uh, designed to be better for mechanical shear stability, so better in dynamic versus static than the Molly Coat 111 and it's got a slightly higher temperature range as well. On the electrical side, we have our Molly Coat 4 electrical insulating compound, which is a sem semi-flowable compound. We've got, as it, it says, it's great for electrical insulating, great dielectric strength. It's been tested to the SAE AMS 8660, tables one through four. So if that's something that's a requirement that you uh, covered here, the Molly Coat 5 compound is a, a, another one that's excellent for dielectric properties. Fantastic in high current applications. It's got high temperature capabilities up to 232C. As I said before, typically no metal to metal applications are that compounds are great for. But if we were to have to make that recommendation for a compound, the Molly Coat 5 compound is the one that has improved metal to metal over all the others. The Molly Coat 3099 HVIC compound is a high voltage compound. It's a great for high voltage insulating, specially formulated for ash over resistance in these high voltage situations. And it keep those properties for extended periods of time, even when exposed to UV light, which can typically break these down. And as a release agent and lubricating type of compound, we have the Molly Coat 7 release, G807 compound. So both of these are thinner consistency than what we would see with one of the sealing compounds, such as the 111. 
7 compound is typically used for foundry shells and core molds as a release agent. Also commonly used for table pulling. The G807 has PTFE in it, has very low friction, and exhibits good corrosion resistance. That's why it's used a lot in uh, the market on uh, brake caliper pins because it's exposed to a lot of uh, splashing water. It needs to maintain that, that good lubricity. And that's all we have for today. Thanks for coming.